Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and today we've got one of the most anticipated devices of the second half of 2013, the Xperia Z1 from Sony. On paper, this phone is great. It's got top of the line internals, it's beautifully built, it's got a camera with a high megapixel count from Sony nonetheless, and to top it all off, it's dust and water resistant. So how does this all translate into real day-to-day -day usage? That is what we try to find out in this video. So without further ado, Here's my review of the Sony Xperia Z1. Let's start with the built-in design. The Xperia Z1 is a beautifully built phone with shatterproof and scratch resistant glass on the front and back and metal on its sides. A downside to having glass on front and back is that the Z1 tends to pick up fingerprints and smudges a lot easier. The Z1 is also moderately thick at 8.5mm. The thickness is largely due to the optics used and the huge 3000 mAh battery it's backing. And for the same reasons, it also weighs in at a hefty 170 grams. In the front, on top, we've got the earpiece with the LED notification light built in, the sensors, a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, lower below we've got the 5 inch 1080p tri-luminous display. And since the Xperia Z1 knobs for on-screen keys, there's nothing at the bottom. At the back, on top, we've got the secondary noise cancelling microphone, Lower below we've got the 20.7 megapixel camera with the huge 1x2.3 inch sensor. Keep in mind the sensor used here is about 70% larger than those found on other flagships. Lower below we've got the Sony and Xperia branding. On top we've got a water resistant 3.5mm headphone jack. To the left we've got a micro SD card slot, a micro USB port that supports both MHL as well as USB OTG and a proprietary connector for a dock. At the bottom, we've got a mesh that houses both the internal speakers as well as the primary microphone. We also get holes for a wrist strap. To the right, we've got the two-stage shutter key, volume rockers, power button, and the micro SIM card tray. The flaps are present for dust and water resistance. The Xperia Z1 even manages to improve upon the water resistance of the original Xperia Z. Moving on to what's underneath the hood. The Xperia Z1 is powered by the Snapdragon 800 chipset. This houses four Crate 400 cores clocked at 2.2 GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 330 GPU and 2 GB of RAM. Internal storage is 16 GB and can be expanded via microSD cards up to 64 GB. The Snapdragon 800 chipset on the Xperia Z1 is a beast, and we got great scores on every synthetic benchmark that we ran. But how does this translate into real day-to-day -day usage, like say, gaming performance? Very well, actually. No matter what intensive game we played on the Xperia Z1, it managed to run through it just fine. No lags, no frame rate drops, it just blew through any game we managed to throw against it. We also have a separate video on the gaming performance of the Xperia Z1. I'll leave a link to that below the like button in the description. So if you guys are interested, feel free to check that out. All this is powered by a huge 3000 mAh battery. Surprisingly, the Xperia Z1 didn't perform too well in a looping video playback test. We got close to just 6.5 hours of video playback before the Z1 ran out of juice. We even got better results with the Xperia Z Ultra. And keep in mind, the Xperia Z Ultra comes with a battery of almost the same capacity while housing a much larger display. Talking about the display, the Xperia Z1 houses a 5-inch 1080p tri-luminous display giving it a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. The display is pretty vibrant, sharp and crisp. As far as viewing angles go, the display does tend to look a little washed out when not viewed head-on. It's definitely not as bad as it was with the reality display on the Xperia Z. However, it's worth noting that Chiesa Marina state that they are receiving reports that not all Xperia Z ones are using the same display panels. Let's move on to the software now. The Xperia Z1 runs Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean with Sony's custom Xperia UI on top. While you get the regular Android 4.2 features like the widgets on lock screen and the data remote, mode, the Sony's also thrown in a few of its own tweaks like say the two rows of customizable quick toggles and the power management app. The UI is also pretty customizable with the ability to add and remove home screens and a host of themes and wallpapers. You also get Sony's take on multitasking with the small apps. Small apps are basically apps that float around on screen no matter what you do. Sony even lets you convert any widget from any app that you download into a small app like the YouTube widget that you see floating around on screen. Apart from the regular Google apps, you also get a host of Sony's own as well as third-party apps included with the Z1. Say for example, McAfee Security, Office Suite Pro, Sketch, Pixel R Express, Sony Live, and so on. You also get the X4 video player which lets you play 4 videos at the same time. For video playback, we have the Movies app. The app syncs to Grace Note and gets you details like plot synapses, cast, and so on. The Movies app also detects any DLNA servers on the same network and makes streaming a lot easier. The video player is also pretty decent and we had no issues with 1080p video playback. 
However, I did not support a few popular codecs like AVI or MKV. While watching videos or browsing pictures on the gallery, the X Reality Engine kicks in. It optimizes various settings like contrast and sharpness to give more punchier images and a better viewing experience. Watching videos on the Xperia Z1 with X Reality turned on is fabulous. As far as the audio output from the internal speakers go, it is better than that of the Xperia Z and even the Xperia Z Ultra, but falls short when compared with flagship phones from other manufacturers like Samsung or HTC. Here, check out the audio output yourself. The audio output being lower than that of flagships from competitors can largely be attributed to the water and dust proofing. For music playback, we've got the Sony Walkman app. Apart from your regular options of sorting your songs, it also gives you a few extra options like Clear Audio Plus and a dynamic normalizer to optimize your audio and if that weren't enough, an equalizer. Sony's also thrown in a pair of great earbuds and the audio output via them is also very good. Overall, the UI on the Xperia Z1 is very fast, fluid and stable. Apps open up quick and there is absolutely no lag. Let's talk a little bit about the camera now. You get a superior auto mode where the Z1 chooses from a host of different scenes and decides what's best for this particular shot. You also get a manual mode. What's weird here is that with the manual mode we've now lost the ability to choose scenes ourselves. Relying on the superior auto mode isn't too bad but the superior auto mode restricts the shots to 8 megapixels. It's only with the manual mode that you can shoot 20 megapixel photos. Again, the highest resolution to shoot 16 to 9 pics is 8 megapixel. HDR functionality is also available only at an 8 megapixel resolution. These issues apart, you also get a time shift burst mode, wherein the Z1 can shoot up to 61 shots within 2 seconds and it even starts shooting before you hit the shutter button. Sony's also thrown in a few real time filters, an AR effect mode, InfoEye, which is similar to Google Goggles, and Social Lab, which lets you live stream videos to Facebook. The dedicated shutter button included here is a two stage button. That means you can half hold it to focus and click it to shoot. At any point of time, you can just tap and hold it to launch the camera. You can even set it to shoot photos or capture video on launch. But overall, the performance of the camera is pretty good. The Z1 takes great pictures under bright light. The images are sharp, clear, there's a lot of detail, and the colors are very natural. Even in low lit conditions, the Z1 manages to do a pretty decent job. The Xperia Z1 can also shoot 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. While you can take photos simultaneously while shooting video, that's restricted to 1 megapixel photos, that's as good as getting a screen grab. As expected, the videos shot with the Xperia Z1 come out great, the video is smooth, the frame rate's good, there's a quite a bit of detail, and again, the color reproduction's natural. So guys, in conclusion, I really do like the Z1. Uh, the only downsides being the battery and to a lower extent the viewing angles and the camera software But that isn't enough to change the fact that the Z1 is a great device So if you're in the market today and you're looking to pick up a phone in this price range I really think you should consider the Z1 and if you guys do want to pick the Z1 up You can do so from Amazon. I'll leave direct links right below the like button in the description So what do you guys think? Do you think the Z1 is a phone worth getting or is there something else that you'd rather consider? the iPhone 5S, the Note 3, the G2. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So I guess that wraps up this video guys. Uh, before you go, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons because uh, that is how YouTube decides which video is cut or not and decides to, uh, you know, uh, suggest it to other viewers. So if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, help me out, hit the thumbs up, uh, hit subscribe. And uh, if you can, go ahead, share it on your social networks. That's always good. So, and talking about social networks, if you guys do want to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, uh, the direct links to my contact, uh, to my social networks can be found right below the like button. So, yeah, I've said like button three times. Okay, hit the like button. So, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked the video, and I'll see you guys soon with more videos. Till then, this is Ashia from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.